Say. We women need to be worried more because the first things that will be taken away when democracy declines, the first things that will be curtailed will be women's rights and minority rights. Say. So the word I want to talk about today is sisterhood. And it's a word that I care about a lot. I think about a lot. And I think it's used a lot in my work, in my writing. When I look at the origins of the word, it has historical roots that go all the way back to 14th century. And it could mean like the shared experience among nuns. And you might say it has more religious connotations um, back then. But of course, over time, it became more secular, more inclusive. And that is the meaning that I will be talking about today. For me, sisterhood is about empowerment, is about caring about the stories also the silences in other women's lives. I don't think it means anything if we have only a few so-called successful women in this area and then a few successful women in another area, let's say in media, in business, in finance. It means nothing to me unless we manage and we learn to lift each other up, to empower each other. The, the great feminist scholar Gloria Steinem has this beautiful quote, and I might not be doing it justice because I'm not exactly quoting, but more paraphrasing. So she says, the moment a woman decides to live her life and to behave as a full human being, she should be warned that the armies of the status quo will treat her as something of a dirty joke. So in a way, there will be a backlash from patriarchy. And in that moment, she will need her sisterhood. We will need each other. Now, I never forget when I used to live in Istanbul many years ago, once um, a scholar who was visiting the city with all the good intentions, she no doubt, but she said something that made me pause and think. She said that it was very understandable for me to be a feminist because after all, I lived in Turkey. So the way she put it, it sounded as if you needed... Um, sisterhoods, you needed to empower women, or you needed to worry about these things if you lived in countries like Turkey, but not so much if you were a citizen of the Western world, because the West was beyond those concerns. The, if, you, if you're a citizen of the Western world, you didn't have to worry as much about human rights or women's rights or the future of democracy in general. Now, fast forward, I think in the last years, in the recent years, this dualistic concept of the world, this dualistic interpretation of the world has been shattered to pieces. Now we know that there's no such thing as solid lands versus liquid lands. And in fact, we're all living through liquid times, which means that things can change and they can change so rapidly. It also means that history is not necessarily linear. You know, you can't trust that tomorrow will always be more progressive, more developed and better and brighter than yesterday. Um, and in fact, just the opposite. History has shown us that things can go backwards. Countries can slide backwards. And if it is true that ca countries can fall into ultranationalism or some type of religious fundamentalism or populist authoritarianism, I think we women need to be worried more because the first things that will be taken away when democracy declines, the first things that will be curtailed will be women's rights and minority rights. And in many ways, actually, this is a crucial moment for global solidarity, for global sisterhood. We are at a major crossroads. With the pandemic, so much is changing and so fast. The pandemic did not create inequalities, but more like expose the existing inequalities and fractures within our societies. Unfortunately, all across the world, throughout the lockdown, we have seen an alarming increase in cases of domestic violence. Um, the, the kind of jobs that will be lost throughout the economic repercussions of the pandemic will be underpaid and undervalued jobs. And it's usually women and young people and immigrants who are holding these jobs. So we, women will suffer a lot from the economic consequences of the pandemic. In fact, the UN has warned that 
decades of progress, years of progress in terms of women's rights might be rolled back in this moment in time. So we can be, and actually, in my opinion, we are sliding backwards. At a moment like this, we do need sisterhood. We need to hear each other's voices. Sisterhood doesn't mean that we are going to disregard the differences, the multiple layers of inequalities with regards to race, ethnicity, regional differences. We will care about all inequalities together. So I understand the emphasis on intersectionality and I find it very important but all I'm trying to say is in an age of um, pandemic in the age of inequalities I think diversity inclusion should be at the forefront of all of our efforts including our recovery efforts these are not side issues they have to be at the center if we want to build a better world a fairer world, a much more inclusive world where everyone is treated with dignity and equality. For that to happen, we are going to need global sisterhood. In a nutshell, we have massive global challenges ahead of us, whether it's the possibility of another pandemic or our climate crisis. You know, as I'm speaking right now, our, our, our planet is burning. We have an emergency, you know, that we need to deal with together. So whether it's the possibility of another pandemic or the climate crisis or any other problem, we do realize that actually we're all interconnected. And these international problems cannot be solved with the forces of tribalism. They cannot be solved with the forces of nativism or nationalism. This is the right moment for us women to be more present, to be more visible, to be more vocal in the public space and to champion diversity and inclusion and equality for all. Say-